Hi, my name's Damara, and I'm going to be doing today the reading for all of the astrological signs, a one card pull for each sign for the full moon in Aquarius. And whenever I do these readings, because I also do a lot of talking about how to move forward to this new world and um, how we need to tune ourselves up. But every time I do a reading, there's something happens. And I was thinking about this and laughing this morning, thinking, OK, what's it going to be today that is kind of giving us symbolically something we need to talk about? And uh, the first thing that happened here is I'm trying to light the candle and I'm only left at the moment with tea lights here. And this candle lit and was looking good. And I went to get myself some water, came back, and the candle had just gone out. No draft, no wind, no nothing. And I just thought, okay, so what is that about? And what I was told is, you are the light. You do not need, like I always light a candle for every reading. And they were saying, you are the light. We are all the light. And this is what this period of time is about. And this full moon in Aquarius is a big like breakthrough energy so that people can really look at this, look at their own authenticity, look at whether they really are shining their light. So that's the first piece of information we have. And last night I thought, well, maybe I won't get time to do the card of the day, so I will do it this evening. And this is the card that was for last night and today. And it is, this is the first time it's come out of the pack. This is the card 33, which is a master builder card, and it's blueprint for fifth dimen dimensional humanity. And this is the difference. Up until now, most people have been talking about 5D, fifth dimension, as not being available on this planet. And a lot of people still do, still do not understand that this is the journey for humanity, the collective of the humanity that we're in right now. This is the journey this time. The first time it has ever happened. We are going to birth 5D onto this planet because we are bringing through the authenticity of our soul. In doing so, we are being asked on this card to remember your gifts and powers. And this is what it's all about. So if you're replaying anything old, launching anything that's very much of the old world, stop. Because what this is about is the new and bringing through anything now that you work with is coming through that silver cord that connects you to your higher consciousness, which is always there for you to tap into. And this is the time now and through this full moon in Aquarius with the sun still in Leo we are being asked to go full power. This is one of the big opportunities of 2024. With Mercury in retrograde, it's also about reflection, reflecting on how you have been playing the game. Because the game is no longer the same. It is no longer a game. It is playing your full authenticity. That is so totally different. Okay, so let's begin with the cards for today. I think I'm going to leave that one out because it's all about birthing the 5D realm onto this planet through our connections, which we must pull on. I'm going to use the archetype cards here. I've already shuffled these seven times, but I'm going to shuffle again. Oh, and we have the prince. And what I'm doing is I'm going to be going through the earth signs as usual first, and I'm starting with Libra. So we already have the card 
out for Libra. And this is the Prince card. And then we're looking at the light attribute here. This is where do not use. And we're looking at the negatives of this because this is where we are not to be in our shadow selves. Obviously, if we're going into 5D, birthed onto this planet in our physical temples, and we are going to be living that way in our golden future, then we need to be in full light attribute. And this is where The love side of it is the positive. You know the love side of it, where we live out our full, real love without fear? Because most people who do not live this out and, and never experience those real, deep connections, which are like live wires, you know? They connect us up with someone else, and then all the connections within both of us, if we're on a higher level, start to feed out to the world. Two people coming together to build a bigger, better power, feeding out to the world on the light side, on the negative, which we always have to have a look at here so that we can curb these attributes. This, this is looking and using, living through the power for self-aggrandizement, like I am this, I am that, I own this, I own that. All of that is out of the window now. And most people who are awakened do realize that. And I'm hearing certainly more and more people who are talking about the world view, the world abundance, not abundance for me. I am only as abundant as the weakest person in the collective. And we are to share everything that we have in excess of what we truly need. This is the new way. So the first card for Libra is to really be playing a part here in the love connections. It's on the line for Libras in the way of connecting up with your true connections now. And this is um, this side of it is coming up. This is the man with the flowers held behind his back. This is about being the true lover. So Librans have a lot to look at in their relationships. And how are they going to play those out from now on and the full moon is actually giving you the power to move forward in that different way the next card we're pulling out here is um, gemini this is the poet i love this for gemini because gemini's with being in that air sign but also being the flitting butterfly a lot of the time um are playing a lot of their life out in their head unless they have truly, truly, um, really got the disciplines going in their life of meditation and um, maybe even other yoga practices where they have to be in movement too so that their movement and their thoughts are all um, coming together on a higher level. So we have the poet, which is, is great for um, Gemini people because it's really tying it up in another way on the higher levels to be able to um, express and be in their insights and also using symbolic language because, because they are Geminis on the air sign where they're very intelligent and can and think a lot. This is where when you're connected to the higher levels also, you can be such a pure poet and and really resonate with words. So this a lot of Geminis need to be writing now and maybe writing out their own truths and coming more into authenticity because of the full moon in Aquarius. Because that's where it's taking us now. It's exploding out the energy of uniqueness. And every single 8 billion or more people on this planet are here for a reason at this time. And we all need to be taking a look at how we are using our uniqueness, not how we are following the norm, following the rules of the matrix 
This is no longer appropriate in any way at all. So loving this card for Gemini. And the things to watch out here um, for is turning a lyric or gift to negative or destructive effect. You know where people have a, a real way with um, negative sarcasm. This is what um, is bad when the Geminis are in shadow and also gossip. There's nothing worse than the person who has that kind of sickly energy that you can see they're loving, talking negatively about others and sharing stuff they should not be sharing. So this is the change into the poet. Isn't that wonderful? And with reflection under the Mercury retrograde and the Aquarius full moon and in Leo, there is the power there to turn that sarcasm round into the resonance of spiritual poetry we're turning Aquarius now and this is interesting for Aquarius because Aquarians are always known in the shadow to be very detached and playing the star even though they're in very negative energy and this is the servant what better card here let me see what the words are on this on the light attribute Yes, I love this because this is so good with the full moon in your own sign. Flowing that light towards you to delight in serving others with a free and loving heart. So again, this is getting out of the head because they're an air sign also um, with a, being Aquarian. And they have that uniqueness to be the star, but it has to be the star who delights in serving others and who is a star and who is well known for being that unique person who can give. And on the shadow side, this is um, using the lack of money. Let me just see the other words here. As an excuse not to move forward in life. And many, many signs do this, but it's a particular trait of Aquarians who really want to be the star and see themselves as the star. And they are truly the star of the Aquarian age when they move their heart into opening fully to give to everyone and to share with everyone. So this is excellent for Aquarians at this time. Let's do the water signs now. And we're going to start with Cancer. And this is the scribe coming up for our Cancerians. And on the light attribute of this, this is preserving knowledge and information. But on the shadow side, this is altering facts or plagiarizing others' works. And this is really, really negative thing to do because it's certainly not gonna fund you if you are a cancerian who is plagiarizing other people's work because karma is a reality and what we're seeing with pluto also coming back into aquarius and being there for 20 years is that all of it is being revealed and it seems to be quicker to me. I see people who are living out karma almost immediately. And I think this is going to get even quicker. So do not, you know, go into this not trusting yourself and your own value. Because that is so much what it is when you plagiarize other people. And you're giving out false information and you can't even tell your story in the way that it truly went. You know, there's parts of my story that I do tell of how when I was living in shadow in relationships, it helps other people when I'm able to be that truthful with people. And, and there are um, two people I've been mentoring for a long time. And uh, we were chatting yesterday and they were saying they still laugh when about the fact that I have told this story. And it's not that I'm proud of it. It's that I'm proud that I moved out of it and that I'm able to tell that story knowing that I'm never going to behave that way again. And yet with Cancerians at the moment, we're having to look at the fact that some of them are not coming into the light. 
This is all there for them. And in the full moon period right now for the next fully for the next three days, what's going to happen is the light will be shine shining on this aspect of you so if you are still plagiarizing and still not telling the truth about your own story and who you have been in the past then start to do that because it's going to come out karmically and in that way it explodes doesn't it it hits you whereas if you are willing to be your authentic self you use it to empower others and that's certainly what i've done in my life so cancers, beware of the karma that could be coming your way if you do not get into that uh, light attribute of being the scribe and writing and talking about things. The Scorpio, this is the father. And I'm thinking here, this is really interesting for Scorpios. And we were talking recently on another video um, that I did about the, oh, it was on another reading, and it was about the attributes where they really like to get their own back. Let me just see the light attributes, talent for creating and supporting life, positive guiding lights within a tribal unit. And I think Scorpios play that role really well when they're awakened and they are doing the disciplines and they are coming into their full-blown spiritual selves connected to their souls and being led, not just being connected to their souls, but being led by them. And this is where they are that light for humanity, a very powerful water sign because they understand life and death and what goes beyond that. Um, and they're not, they're not frightened by that either. And we need those people around with the Scorpio, Sun, Moon and um, Ascendant. But the shadow attributes of this. Yeah, abuse of authority, detrimental and distorted control. And this is where it comes in really badly. You know, where the distorted side of the Scorpio can be very distorted, probably more distorted than a lot of the other signs because of that deep water and the feelings they have. And if those feelings go into the negative shadow, they are very deep indeed and can go into black magic and all of those things that we should be done with by now. I can't even believe how much of that still goes on. And um, the thing about that is they waste a lot of their time because if you're aiming that at people who are disciplined, who are connected to the light and on their soul journeys, they cannot be affected by it. It's almost like a, they might be aware of it, but it's almost like just flick my fingers and it's gone. Light one incense stick and it doesn't affect me. I can't even feel it in the room. But it never comes near because they're so protected through the purity of their energy. So remember that. The more you go into your soul journey, the more you're um, protected against people who are trying to distort energy around you and come into your energy field. But this one is it, it, it's called the Father card. And I think this is because... A lot of this comes down the father line um, for women and for men. It comes through how perverted and distorted the male energy was in their family. So this is something to remember for Scorpios. There may be a lot of stuff that you need to heal from your father line. And you may not even be aware of that. You may admire his arrogance or you may admire his impurities like on the real male chauvinist side. So this needs to be worked on. And for women, it's the same, because we need to be activating our divine masculine as well as our divine feminine, because that's our action. We may be in divine feminine, but that is weak if we never put it in action and we do not activate that masculine part of ourselves. So very, very important there for Scorpio. The next card is Pisces, full moon Pisces. Ah, I love it. This is so on track. The mystic, and this is truly what our Pisces need to be in now, in the light attribute, because that's what they came for. 
they are the 100% visionaries that we need to show us the way because they can be so enlightening. And we also know, don't we, the shadow side of this is that they are so disrupted by being in the shadow of the um, negative um, daydreamy state where they're not even present. So there is two very different sides, as there are with all sides. But when this comes up in the mystic, there is hope. <laughs> and this is really guiding. It's revels in intimate union with the divine. I love that because it's not just reveling in relationships. It's reveling your relationship, your intimacy with the divine. Feel empowered by your connection. Carry on your meditation. Up your meditation to longer. If you're doing this once a day for 20 minutes, do two times 20 minutes. And also keep bringing in those exercises for the now moment. Get yourself stimulated into the art world because in a lot of um, the visionary attributes of Pisceans can come out if they get involved in art and unique creations. Remember, we've got that full moon in Aquarius, which is asking us to come into our unique selves. There is not two people the same on this planet, which is incredible when you think there's over 8 billion now. So let's just have a quick look at the words for the shadow. Delusional support with the divine. Yeah, that can go very extreme with Pisces because they can be delusional and also um, diving deep into drugs and then thinking that they are awake and aware. I've certainly met a few of those along my journey. A while back now, but I remember thinking um, that everybody at the time was, this is probably 20 years ago when we were losing whole generations to marijuana because they were using it every day and they were not in any of their masculine action energies. It was always manana, manana. <laughs> and um, this can still be so where Pisceans... Um, actually get into delusional states and they have the ability to go that deep delusionally because they have that incredible ability to go into the visionary more than any other of the astrological signs so we're you know calling for all our pisceans to be there in their mystic with their intimate relationship with the divine Loving that card too. In fact, I'm loving all of these. They're so on track for what we're going through. And this is the earth sign. And the first earth sign is Taurus. And goodness, look at this. We have the goddess for all those Taurians who've been deeply entrenched in the more financial side of life recently. And um, that's the shadow aspect of them, the security side, and not going for the divinity security, which is them showing up as the goddess. I'm just going to check the actual light attributes on the card. The feminine expressed through wisdom, nature, life force, and sensuality. And that is so on track. Yeah, and the shadow attributes here for the Taurian, the goddess card, is exploitation of the female nature and form. And we do get that because um, that's the Venus, other Venus side of Taurians, is that um, feminine side the venus side of the feminine okay with taurus but also the financial so they can get into the decadent side and not honest side of either money or them as a woman so this is about not selling your body or going into relationships just for lust this is about living taurians through your goddess and for male taurians it's about expressing yourself in the right way as the god through the light attributes of that power but softness too and the um nurturing side 
of the God and the goddess of Taurians to use that now in divine union and to come out of the financial side. Just think of a world, the new world that we're going towards. The, the passing over of money is of no consequence because everybody will be equally taken care of and seen as equal in the world. So all our needs will be met and we will talk from our wisdom points and our spiritual points of how this um, resources need to be used. So money is of no consequence. So if you're still on that line, come off of it and start trusting and surrendering in your divine goodness and your nurturing sense. So that's Tori and we're going for Virgo next. The rebel in Virgo. Now, that's unusual because <laughs> Virgos are great at sticking to the rules and the sort of uh, more earthly side of perfectionism. So this is good for Virgos to be the rebel and, and in a way pulling on their soul self and using all their um, divine gifts and powers is being a rebel to their more earthly Virgoan nature. So it's a great card for our Virgos with this full moon in Aquarius. So good on you. Let's see you reveling through those more fixed ideas and fixed notions. Let's see what the light attribute actually says. Challenging authority to affect social change oh my goodness we need that so much and rejects the spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs and that's so good isn't it because we have all these religious um conforming associations which try to and have done very successfully over the centuries convince people that they are not the way, the truth, and the light, as was told by the Nazarene from history. And, and actually, those words are in the Bible. So they're the only words I probably relate to in the Bible. Everything I can do, you can do, and more. That's the, the, another part of a, a, maybe a different quote. I can't remember. But these are quotes I used to use on my healing course when people were worried that they shouldn't be healers because the church and the different religious um, institutions have never said that we could be healers. But the thing is, we are natural healers and all we have to do is develop that. But we also are developing ourselves so that we are on the soul level and that we're not in the negatives because we're also healing the shadow. So the rebel here is going against the stonewall authorities, religious associations, Freemason groups that only lead the elite and bind and guard them into thinking that they are somehow different to all other souls. I mean, the whole thing is kind of gross. And what we have to do is have the rebels, and, and the Virgoans are being asked to do this right now. It's in their pathway because they can be very rooted to the earth. Let's see what the negative is on that. Yeah, it can be that they reject. They go the other way. They reject legitimate um, universal laws. And, um, and rebel, and they rebel out of peer peer presence like you know when you think about it the church has had many uprisings and they have killed through religious organizations they have killed probably more than any other natural happenings on the planet and we know that and yet people still join these associations and they still go into like the black magic of um freemasonry and that there is an elite and that you go up the levels. There is nothing like that when you are in your divinity because we are all capable of amazing power gifts. And this is being shown to a lot of those associations now because they're seeing people work their power, their individual power. They're seeing people whose light is shining so strong now and they're not part of any of these organizations. 
They don't need that. That's collapsing around us now. So the Virgoans are going to be being called to come out of the, the fixed part of their moral system and their joining associations and things like that. I'm trying to think now. We're going on to the... We've got the Taurian, we've got the Virgo. We need the Taurus, don't we? Let's see oh, the magical child in the Taurus. I love this. Again, this is giving a lightness to the earthy um, context of the Taurian people. And this is... Um, more magical I'm just thinking here I need to go back on this reading to see if I've actually done this correct I think I did I think this is this is Virgo and the other earth sign We're going to carry on here. I'm going to correct this in the description if I've slipped one. I ought to have these written down. But this is four Taurians now. Whether we've done that before or not, we've pulled this with the intent on the Taurian. So we need to play this out. And this is the magical child. This is another side of that earthy approach that they have. This is seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things. I love that. And the belief that everything is possible because Taurians can be stuck in the mud. And I've said this before, you know, it, it's like where they need to get more friable and pliable in themselves and their energy. And this is a lovely kind of sign of that. This is like fairy magic here. Let's see what the negative um, shadow attribute is here. Pessimism, depression, disbelief in miracles. Yeah, and that can drag them down. And what they need to do is lighten up on everything they do. Like go dancing, get that um, magical energy going, that rhythm, but, and changing the rhythm. But also light, eat lighter so that you're not really in so much of the earth energy because you have to work through and with all the energies. You may have a sun sign Taurus, but you have to know how to lighten up and use all the other energies. Not one energy should be overpowering you. So this is bringing the magic and the belief because if you believe in miracles, they happen around you and you, you don't even call them miracles. You just think, that's amazing, that's just happened for me. That's because my positive intentions were flowing out there. You know, I know there are times when this is on fire for me where I can't even believe the synchronicities that are happening. And other times it's in more of a slower rhythm, but it's always there because I know it happens and I know that things are so much beyond normal thinking because I've experienced so much and I'm so grateful for that in my life. But with earth signs, it's more difficult to get them off the ground a little bit. So actually bringing it into your normal daily activities is a good way. Okay, we're going on to the fire now and I'm going to start with Aries. This is the mediator. Now, that's a really interesting thing for Aries, isn't it? Who can be just walking forward and being very aware of themselves in their fire energy and what they're going to do. And they're great doers. They do achieve. But this is being a mediator. So again, this is bringing in new energies and new ways. And it has been that way for all of the cards. They're not their known in a lot of ways, they're not their first known aspects. And this is what we have to be. We have to be a melody of all of these energies and all of these attributes, whatever sign we are now, because we have to live out there big. And I'm not talking about the way in fame and money. That's gone. And a lot of people are hanging onto the edges by the um, grips of their fingernails, you know, because they're still hanging on to what they had in the past. And this is not the way to go. We're going into the future. And we are living now, as far as we can, 
all the attributes of the golden future, we need to be living now. And a lot of people who are awakened and have been so for a while are able to do that. So for Aries, you're being called to be more of a mediator than being self-involved. And the light attributes here are gift for negotiating fairness and strategy in personal and professional life. That's so brilliant for Aries to be focused on that. And respect for both sides of an argument because they can be a bit bullheaded. So that's wonderful that they're being asked with this full moon to shine a light on that. And the full moon will be doing that for you, Aries. It will be shining the light for you, but you need to pick up on it. That now it's about standing back and seeing both sides of everything. And the shadow attribute there will be negotiating with an, material, an ulterior motive or hidden agenda, either personally or professionally. Now, if anybody's in that shadow aspect, they're really holding on to the old 3D world because there's no need to do that now. No need to, you know, be concerned with um, a hidden agenda or personal or professional gain because we're we're now into the energy of the collective and if one person loses you lose that's how it is now and karma is coming in to correct it almost immediately because we are on a new loop this loop is taking us into fifth dimensional living from love from sharing from all of those aspects of living as one. So Aries, thank goodness we have you as our mediators now, working on the good of all. And Leo, the liberator, it would be good if all our Leos right now turned around and became the liberator rather than the performer who wants to be in charge and out the front. So this is, again, this is really amazing that it comes in to shine a light on one of their main traits and to turn them now into a liberator. Let's look at the light attributes. Freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs, releasing negative thought patterns. So not only, you know... Um, releasing yourself but now freeing others and this is so about liberating Leos because I just had a quick look at the shadow and it's in impos imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate ignoring legitimate constraints and that is so Leo in a shadow because Leos are well known for being those leaders who take people into tyranny and um, control and, and all sorts of horrors. So this is about the opposite for them in their negative state is to become the liberator of first of yourself and then to become the liberator for everyone else. So pure, so energized, freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs. So in line with the full moon in Aquarius, which is asking you to allow yourself to live through your authentic, unique nature, connected to your soul path. Throw it all off. Throw away all those uniforms. Those medals of attainment which mean nothing in the real soulful world. Throw it all away. Liberate yourself now from any restraints, from societies, groups, elite forces that think they are in control because they were never in control. It was an illusion taken on board by the many. It is over. Sagittarius, finishing, finishing here with our Sagittarians. So, okay, with all their energy, their fire energy. This is about gossip, turning that gossip and talking to others into awake. This is awake, 
to the consideration of the feelings of others. Honouring trust, that is so cool, isn't it? That is so good because gossip has to go out the window here. I think a lot of us readers have had this coming up so much in our readings and um, it's over, just stop. But, you know, the first thing is the people who listen. It's not just those people who keep, you know, with their sarcastic approach about others because they do not believe in themselves. They come towards you with some gossip. Stop it immediately and say, I do not want to hear gossip about others when you don't even know whether this is true. There is a difference here in talking to people about things that you've experienced with others and around others when you are talking about it in an awakened way to help others to comprehend these different things that happen to us. That's totally different. And sharing our own experiences like that is not gossip. This is to warn others a lot of the time. And you can do this in a completely different way when you really do need to warn somebody. I had a situation the other day where I kept being delayed going out. And I couldn't understand why. And I went to the door with my sun hat on and my bag twice and got turned back by dark clouds, rain forcefully coming down. And I kept thinking, I'm being delayed for a reason. And when I actually got out, I did what I needed to do. And then I went into one of my favorite places where a lot of people collect. And I saw this person who was always trying to push his very solid, strict, limited ideas onto other people. And he had just commandeered somebody I had just done a long reading for, that was very good for both of us, you know. He really related to the higher levels. And there he was, and he'd been commandeered by this guy. And I was there to see it so that I could quickly email him. Um, And actually, he emailed me first to say, I'm just thinking about this, to say this had happened. And then I was able to say, listen, I've had experiences with this person and this is what they try to brainstorm me into with no breaks in the conversation. They were just hammering into me with their very fixed old world ideas. And I was able to say to them, listen, this is what I found. You know, and that's not gossip. What we're talking about here is when it comes over in that sickly way where you know that person is so not believing in themselves, so they have to talk about others. So be aware of that. And for Sagittarians, this is about not getting involved in either listening or doing this so that your um, light attributes of having consideration for the feelings and honouring others, the trust that others have in you, that you don't twist what they've said to you and feed it out in a very negative way. So we have an amazing set of 12 cards here and every one of these positive attributes is for every one of us, but we are just highlighting for each sign which attribute, this full moon beam of energy that is going to be here for the next three days. We will experience it here in Mexico tonight. And I know that right now in England, they are already experiencing this. So this is a timely reading for everyone to really hone in on the one attribute that's come up on these archetypal cards for you today for this full moon. So... I'm still not sure whether I've covered all the fire signs and I may do a separate one. No, sorry, the earth signs. I know I did um, Virgo and Taurus. I'm not sure whether I did it twice. So I will have to replay the video and I will do a special one if I did, in fact, leave a earth sign out. We'll see. So thank you for listening. And really be awake and aware for the next three days so that you don't miss what you're being shown about yourself. Put your awareness on the sound of your own voice when you're speaking and you will hear what you're saying and how you're coming over. Put your awareness on the voice of the person that is talking to you and you will 
become immediately aware of where they're really coming from. That's a real um, amazing um, practice that you can use that is a part of the now moment exercise, which I learned in a mystery school and is on the playlist, Fast Track to Cosmic Consciousness. But using it for these three days will open up to how you're activating and how others are activating towards you so that you can see whether you're being programmed by others, whether you're seeking advice from others that are not enlightened at all. So thank you again for allowing me into your sacred space today and have a great Sunday. Bye for now.